see opportunities. Space is an unforgiving but beautiful place and you will need training in order to live among the stars. Astronomy, the laws of thermodynamics, navigation, knowledge of these skills can be the difference between life and death. My name is Captain Jack and welcome back to the channel. If you didn't know, I'm currently out in Prague visiting the Keen Software House offices celebrating the launch of Space Engineers. It's now out of early access in full release along with a major overhaul of survival. It's an impressive time to be honest to be a Space Engineers fan. This weekend it is free to play and it's on sale as well which is excellent on the Steam front page. Definitely go try it out and then think of buying it because it's also been a price decrease as well. Now while I'm out here I did get to ask the developers a lot of questions, but I did also get the time to sit down with Mark Rosa, the CEO of Keen Software House and the man behind Space Engineers, and chat with him more about the future of the game, as I'm sure that's something we're all dying to hear more about. So I'm going to let this roll, just bear in mind it is being recorded in an office environment, so with a little bit of background audio and the mic on my camera is on the way out. Anyway, please do enjoy this video. So, Space Engineers release, how do you think it's gone? Oh, uh, we're roll. Uh, the development and the release, I think, was, was really good. Of course, there were some like harder times, you know, during the development, but in the end, uh, I think we managed everything very well. And uh, the last year was, uh, I think, very well managed. It was just like one thing after another. And uh, uh, then the actual release uh, was also super good. Everything was prepared in advance, uh, so that's good. And uh, with the actual quality of the game, I'm also very, very happy. The, the quality and the scope, you know that all the things that all these years were unfinished and were always like like i always could see them you know like for example mm -hmm. shadows like blinking weirdly or trees doing some weird stuff or like uh, ships sometimes being like uh, uh, easy to like penetrate and be destroyed like nothing like a, like a butter or something and so all these things we finally uh, polished fixed uh, and, uh, and uh, so that's regarding the quality and regarding the scope, there is actually much more stuff than I expected six years ago. When the project's definitely expanded over yeah. time, as yeah. the inclusion of planets is yeah. like the main factor of that. Actually planets, yes. Uh, and planets is something that enabled the like, complication mm. of the other things. Because if you don't have planets, you don't really need to have like, very well work working oh. wheels, you know, because like, you cannot drive in space. Yeah, you're not driving on ground essentially. But once we had planets, like many new kind of problems opened up, so we had to solve them. So uh, this definitely like increased the scope of the project. So that's why I'm saying the scope is, let's say like 150% of what I hoped for. Interesting. So obviously ladders is a big thing that's come back to the game now. Mm -hmm. I remember they were in 2014, I think that's when they left. Mm -hmm. And now 2019, they finally returned. What made you kind of want to return ladders to the game? Has it always been a goal or is it a community which kind of you know, being passionate about ladders, did they motivate you to bring them back? I think both things. Mm. And like we, we always wanted to add ladders back. Uh, it's like we always knew we'll probably do it as the last thing, you know, because it's kind of like a nice uh, dot, you know, at the end of, of the whole development. I like uh, letters, or I mean, uh, I'm the one who actually wanted to have letters in space mm -hmm. engines in the beginning. Like, I'm not a letter hater. So, and, and the reason was that actually, like for me, space engineers uh, is about interacting with the environment and feeling that you are in this environment, you know, like feeling that you are present, this immersion and everything. And letters, when uh, you're climbing on them, you can see your, your hands. Yeah. And you are, so I think it's actually adding a lot more of this immersion. To the game it's not just like i'm standing there and i press f you know and some terminal does something or something like this and i don't really feel like i'm connected to the world with letters you know climbing and doing these things uh i think you feel much more uh, connected to the world to be honest i would actually like to have m many more things where a player with his hand is interacting with the world mm. I think it's definitely been received well. Just for some people who might not understand, could you kind of tell us why ladders were removed in the early stage? Was it due to you know, technical complications? Or? There were some technical complications. For example, if I remember, uh, like 
multiple people uh, climbing, you know, on the same mm -hmm. ladder thing. Uh, in multiplayer, there were some like synchronization issues and stuff. Like when a player is on a ladder, not on a ladder, like he's a, uh, this kinetic character or physical character, and we need to and like switch between these. Then what happens when player is uh, climbing on a ladder and someone destroys, you know, those ladder blocks mm -hmm. and all these issues? So uh, we decided to to remove it. And uh, when I think about this, maybe it wasn't that much needed to remove it because like, there are many more things in the game that were not working for many years. Mm -hmm. like, they're in some prototype phase, but they didn't work in uh, 50 different edge cases. Yeah. So uh, maybe letters weren't that much different to other things. But we also kind of were feeling that they are not really needed in Space Engineers. So that kind of like forced us to uh, remove them in the beginning. And then later we realized that we want them back and the community wants them back and we knew it will be a good end you know, to this phase. Definitely. Like I say it's been received well. Like all the comments is full of ladders, ladders. <laughs> and then you've seen with the ladder competition as well, people are definitely passionate about them. So moving forward, future content for Space Engineers. You've spoken about it in your blog post. We touched on it slightly in a couple of live streams in the past two weeks. What are the overall plans? Because we've got um, economy is something you mentioned. Do you want to expand on that a little bit? Is there anything you can tell us about economy just yet? Uh, just a little bit. Uh, our current plans uh, that first we need to kind of like prototype and test them mm. uh, is to allow players to trade between each other on a server. You know, not MMO style economy, yeah. just just on the server. And then also have some trade posts with some kind of let's call it NPCs or something like that uh, that you can trade with. You know, with different. Uh, categories of classes like one is you know for the mining stuff another is for components and so on and uh, so that's what we are thinking about it's still not uh, set in stone it's not uh, like a promise you know that it will be exactly as I said yeah. uh, it still will need to go through uh, some iterations you kind of spoke about your idea of SE's world being more immersive to a style where things are always going on and the players always challenge by something in your other live streams. So does economy kind of build into that overall sort of goal for Space Engineers continuing in development? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. Awesome. And also yeah, combat is something you want to revisit at some point. I think it's definitely a big uh, community feature to talk more about combat. So is there anything you can tell us about that? Yeah. Uh... I think there we will go through two stages. One will be that first we will focus on weapons, mm -hmm. like either character or block uh, as weapons, and maybe even some defense mechanisms, maybe tools, but again, it's still like super early to talk about. And uh, because we need to, uh, as with the economy, we need to make some prototypes, experiment Definitely. like what we like, and what are kind of like easily achievable things, because uh, for the for this first weapon thing, uh, we don't want to be doing huge uh, engine changes. You know, mm -hmm. it should be basically just like reusing what is already there and not like rewriting the engine, like some huge changes. Uh, so, uh, so that's that should be about just the weapons, uh, not the combat itself. Like yeah. of course, the combat will be more interesting with more weapons, but again, it's not about uh, combat. It's mostly about like engineering with the new weaponry. So the first phase is kind of like the new blocks and new yeah. sort of like custom weapons you can make, yeah. and then the second phase could be how those combat styles are going to affect yeah. gameplay essentially. Yeah. And this is something I'm thinking quite a lot about because for me, space engineers, as it is like this stage or this installment, was always about creating a world where everything interacts with everything, you know, and it makes sense. And uh, we, we just finished, you know, this phase. And then we can start taking this uh, foundation to different directions. And combat is one of them, kind of logical. And especially because people uh, like like to fight in games, like it's the most Definitely. common thing usually. And, but also, even for me, it actually makes sense. And this was actually how we designed Space Engineers, like those, all these years back, that, uh, uh, how would, uh, the, how would be the, the gameplay, you know, that uh, you have a base, someone comes there, like, can you detect him on radar or not, like, should there be some stealth mechanics or not, how they attack, uh, how, for example, he can defend his, his ship, if he's online or not online, all these questions. So now, finally, we are getting to this point, and, uh, and uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I would like to make it very fluid. Uh, okay. for this combat experience to happen. So it shouldn't be like uh, you need to uh, find uh, 30 people and start server yeah. and you know, like synchronize all these things and 
then maybe after 30 minutes, one hour, you actually start something. So a bit more like quick play, essentially, yeah, exactly. so people can jump straight into it. Should be combat. super quick. It should yeah. be super quick, uh, and also you shouldn't feel uh, bad when you lose your creation. You know, because if someone spends a few hours making his ship, and then he just doesn't want to go to a fight with the ship, like because yeah. you know, like he will lose. But uh, if he has a in this quick uh, combat thing, uh, if he can use a blueprint, you know, and just quickly finish that ship from that blueprint, you know, he's more willing to risk that ship and go to a fight. So this is what I'm thinking about. Okay, brilliant. It's good to hear. Mm -hmm. So looking a bit closer now, decorative blocks is obviously something which was mentioned in the blog post and is what's been widely talked about as well. Can you tell us anything more about what plans are for decorative blocks? Can you some hints of what they might be and how soon we might see them? It should be the first thing we will do, mm -hmm. like uh, or part of the team, because the other work on uh, will work on economy and Xbox or uh, so decorative blocks is mostly about the art and it's basically adding non-mandatory uh, blocks to the game. You know, something that you actually don't need for the gameplay, like it will not help you win or anything. Yeah. Uh, they are just decoratives for your ship, for interiors and uh, kind of exterior some of them. So uh, they should be really nice and um, yeah, that's the main point. And there shouldn't be really that much new functionality for them. Like, for example, I think there are just like detailed things that uh, they will signal if they are on or off. So uh, kind of just made better, make the place look nice. Essentially, yeah. they're not going to change it too yeah. much. And then uh, I think one of them will have a <laughs> flashing effect, you know, okay. like a sound effect. But that's that. Like, uh, it will not be new functionality like adding it to red or LCD or something mm -hmm. like this. Except. Actually, LCD is a special case, but oh, yeah. I will, yeah, uh, there will be some big change, but let's keep that for a surprise. Okay. Can you sort of tell us, just hint us any sort of blocks which are coming in decorative ones? Can you tease us anything just yet? Uh, one we already teased in the blog post, oh, that right. was the cryopod. Ah, uh, yeah, we saw that one. Yeah. And that was on a small grid, wasn't it? Yes, yes. So that one uh, is already kind of like leaked yeah. out. <laughs> but. Uh, uh, the other, uh, they really should be just decoratives, and they are really beautiful, in my opinion, and uh, even kind of like setting a new standard for the visuals in Space Engineers. Definitely. Something we can like, okay, if you'll be uh, designing Space Engineers 2, uh, the visual quality should be like this. Excellent. I was saying that Space Engineers 2 is something you've mentioned a few times um, in the last couple of days. Is that something you're obviously considering for the long-term future, obviously not by this moment, but... Yeah, yeah for the long-term. Uh, basically, I just have a file where every time I have some idea, you know, that doesn't seem like, or it's something worth a new game, you mm -hmm. know, something that you don't want to just add to current game as a like extension of it or so, yeah. uh, uh, and also uh, things that would probably break uh, like backwards compatibility on modes or worlds or something like this. Like sometimes you actually need a, a fresh new start, you know, so that should be Space Engineers too. So I think a lot has been learned from Space Engineers' yes. development over the last five, six years now. Yeah. So therefore, you, if you can apply that to a new game, it can essentially get you off on a faster start, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if, if I think like from practical perspective, if we'll be doing Space Engineers 2 sometime in, in like unspecified future, yeah. uh, of course we will take Space Engineers as it is and just iteratively start changing things here and there, you know, like in engine, you know, user interface or in the mechanics. So it's not like we'll like throw away everything we have and start from point zero. Uh, but in some things, like inner workings, will probably kind of throw away or like refactor them completely. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I would like to redo is the multi-core support. Change the game so that we can handle, like even now the game can use uh, multiple cores uh, in parallel in certain like code pathways, you know, like in certain things, but not everywhere. You know, okay. that's the thing. But uh, for a new game, I think we should like look on this much, much closely. And I would like a game where everything runs asynchronously, even camera and the world and the game itself. So for example, when there will be some huge explosion and uh, things will have to be recomputed, you know, like oxygen and all these things, uh, sometimes you just cannot make it real time. You know, like sometimes it just yeah. cannot be because there must be a lot of calculations. But uh, if it's done properly asynchronously, there is no reason why physical calculations should slow down camera movement and rotation. Uh, 
So, uh, for example, let's say some ship will explode and it will be frozen for a second, mm -hmm. but your camera and your like a angle uh, will be still independent from this. So we will still be able to move. And in my opinion, this will add uh, like a better feeling. You know that you are in control of this game. Definitely, it's not stuck. You know how does like how badly it feels when yeah. the program stucks, right? Like it's wow. annoying. And uh, so this is another big challenge to make it more asynchronous and a lot more multicore friendly. So we'll have to rewrite a few things in inside of the engine. I mean, it's great to hear you're going to take you know everything with space engineers and just rework it essentially to start on a new thing. At least it's not throwing away you know the last X amount of years of work as well, which is good to hear. So moving on to another SE project, obviously the Xbox One version is something which is massively talked about within the community. So now it's back in 2014, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So now obviously it's been a couple of years since we've heard anything. Can you tell us how the project's progressing? Yeah. Uh, now, uh, especially as we finished uh, like this version of uh, Space Engineers, so like we got the game out of Red Access, uh, the Xbox will get much more people on the team because up until now there was always smaller team working on this and basically trying different technological routes, you know, how to how to solve it. Because uh, our game runs on C Sharp, .NET, DirectX and uh, even though Xbox is still from Microsoft, so it would look like it's easy to, to port the game, yeah. but there wasn't the libraries and the frameworks on Xbox, you know, that we would need, like these .NET things. And, but what happened uh, during all those years is that we were uh, experimenting and trying different approaches how to do this, like many of them failed, uh, because we tried like to do it through like this technology, the technology and so on, because we didn't want to rewrite the whole game, we just wanted to use the source, co source code we have and just modify a few little things that are different between PC and That's Xbox. Nice. Uh, but uh, up until now those like uh, roads were uh, not successful, but what also happened is that uh, in parallel with us, Microsoft was also developing better support for Xbox developers and for mm -hmm. .NET on, on Xbox and so on. So uh, we are kind of like meeting, you know, at the right time and place. And uh, with their help, uh, we can take what we have, do a few modifications and have the game for Xbox, I think, quite soon. And uh, a larger team will start working on this again now, you know, because uh, like the main work on getting out of the really access is done, like there was our focus for, for now, so the big focus now will be on getting the game on Xbox. Another big part uh, that I'm actually quite curious how we will solve is the UI uh, that we'll need to change for Xbox. Definitely, because obviously with a controller you're quite limited compared to a keyboard, so mapping and, the buttons. And we'll also kind of like answer that at this moment, if we will do like big changes to UI or just like help it to work on, on Xbox, but not do the big changes. Because uh, one thing that I, I think is very important for some like future version of Space Engineers is to completely redo the UI, so it's like super user intuitive. And, like everything should be context sensitive. Uh, people shouldn't see like 100 different you know, like information on the screen, only basically what they need. Is that for Space Engineers and the Xbox version or just the Xbox version? Uh, I think... Uh, more like the next version. The like next version. Maybe we would look on this for the Xbox version and mm -hmm. then redo it, maybe. Starts yeah. like a miniature start yeah. for like an experiment for the next yeah. version as well. Like that's one, one option, but it also depends uh, on uh, like who will do this UI design because it's a big thing actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, so for example, one role that we are still trying to hire uh, uh, is someone who is very experienced with user interface and user experience designing and someone who can understand the ergonomics of the game and basically design it so that there is no friction in like so you can just like as fluidly as possible start using the game or the product and not think about like this is a button for this or that you know and mm -hmm. have this another like layer of not understanding the thing so i'm not sure if we will make this big ui change for xbox or keep it for space 2 or whatever that's still open but i think it's uh it's something that is very needed and um it's also kind of needed for me because I like when games are kind of easy, you know, to yeah. for to access or they can be complicated on inside, but the stuff I see, I want it to be easy, you know. So it's something that like pick it up and go straight yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. And the, the fact that inside the game is complicated after I get to some level or something mm -hmm. like this, I don't really care. You know, yeah. I just want to know that what like the actual thing that is in front of me should be easy. Excellent. So obviously, um, Xbox versions is going to be heavily focused on now that SE's release. Will we start seeing some teasers or some more information about it 
this year as we get closer to potentially maybe a release date either this year or next year? Are we going to start seeing tidbits of information here and there? Uh, for the Xbox? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. I think even during this year, hopefully. Okay, brilliant. That's an exciting. So a long-term plan for space engineers. Obviously, you've covered obviously what might be appearing in the short term of this year. Is the long-term plan eventually to do a couple of you know new major updates and then look at space engineers too? Uh, well, to be honest, now we hold a few kind of smaller updates mm -hmm. or extension additions. Uh, then uh, we'll focus mainly on the Xbox, and then we'll look on this combat thing. You know, okay. like we already have uh, even like project name for this combat project. There are a few alternatives how to do it. You know. So uh, I think it's too early to talk about this. So again, uh, it should be now these few smaller updates or additions, then uh, Xbox and then uh, combat, and uh, then we will see. Would you class a combat phase there as like quite a big thing for space engineers compared to the smaller like decorative yeah, features yeah, almost? Yeah. It, it will be. Uh, I mean, it will be basically a new game okay. when I think about this. And actually, I think it's really good to think about this as a new game because it separates it two games. That for me, Space Engineers 1, you know, the one we have right mm -hmm. now, is still about mostly about like sandbox, you like. Yeah. There are survival things and so on, but for me, it's you know like a sandbox world where you can create whatever you want, experiment with these things. Like that's how I think actually it should be. You know mm -hmm. that. Uh, if it will be also a game where you are doing some other things, then it will be two things in one thing, you know, so in, even in my opinion, it will be very confused. So I think it's really important to, to like separate these two things. And uh, another important thing is that when you are doing two things and you have like certain amount of time and, and attention, uh, uh, you definitely cannot do those things as good as just one thing, you know. So, for me, it's better to do really sandbox properly, you know, with some survival, but uh, the sandbox working well, than to have kind of working uh, sandbox and kind of working survival. That's not really uh, good for me. So, uh, for this combat game, or ho however you know it will turn out, uh, for me, it's it will be of course like continuation of Space Engineers universe and and everything. Maybe we'll be able to add even some more lore, you know, because we actually, or I was never actually speaking about like lore for, mm -hmm. for Space Engineers, I was just keeping it to myself. And uh, so I'm not sure if I will like reveal it more uh, in this game, but uh, yeah, it should be a separate game. Maybe it will even target different kind of people that are Space Engineers right now, so it can be really uh, really like a new, new experience because now the game is mostly for people who like are creative they want to create stuff build stuff and so on and this game will be mostly about people who want to fight and do the combat do the tactics, tactics and strategy and, and whatever and a little bit about people who are still engineering for the, for this combat mm -hmm. things but we really must be uh careful how we'll mix these two roles because maybe there is not a good overlap between those people, that people who want to fight different audiences really don't want to build, you know, and, and so uh, I, we also don't want to destroy the game. But again, for me, this is like really the continuation of the vision for space engineers that take the sandbox and put it to good use, you know, in a good fight. It's actually taking the essence of space engineers and applying it to different formats, yeah. so applying it to a combat bit. Yeah. Where you know people can fight and stuff like that. So yeah. this is a good plan. So to remind yourself, basically, are you satisfied with where Space Engineers is at this point in time? Are you yes. happy going forward? Yes, very much. And uh, yeah, it's very good. Excellent. Well, I think I can that thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. But we know that advanced theories and sophisticated technology aren't enough. For it is creativity and teamwork that make true space engineers. many of us. We are growing. We are getting stronger. Someday they will ask, where were you when the first space engineer welded the red ship? What will you create? Where will you explore? How will you survive? <laughs>